Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Humphrey Bogart and Walter Houston in The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's play is an exciting, dramatic story of a man's greed for gold. It was one of the really fine motion pictures of recent years. The Warner Brothers hit, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. And tonight we present the original stars of the film, Humphrey Bogart and Walter Houston, the latter in the role that won him an Academy Award. If Housewives had the equivalent of an Academy Award to bestow, I believe most of them would give that award to Lux Flakes. They're accustomed to its fine performance, and Lux Flakes keeps up the record year after year. Our stars are on stage, and here's the curtain for The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, starring Humphrey Bogart as Dobbs and Walter Houston as Howard. First time to come up with them was in Tampico, at the seaport town. Tampico, northeast Mexico. I was having a beer near the docks when they came in. Hot Sunday afternoon. You a fellow American? Yeah, that's right, mister. <laughs> what do you want? I want to know about a guy named McCormick. You ever hear of him? McCormick? McCormick. Oh, yeah, yeah, in the oil business. That's right, oil. Have you seen him lately? Where can we find him? Well, you gentlemen, I'd run clear of McCormick. Hires a crew to work in the oil field, see, then he never pays him off. <laughs> Slick. <laughs> Slick like oil. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't mean to tell me he's hooked two smart fellow Americans like you. <laughs> that's right, Pop. Six weeks in the oil fields, 120 in the shade. Only I ain't through with Mr. McCormick. Fred C. Dobbs is going to get his wages, see? Come on, Dobbs, let's have a beer. <laughs> I could hear him talking at the bar, drifters, both of them. Not what you'd call good friends, either. Just a couple of guys that happened to wind up in Tampico. Yeah, just like me. Only difference is they're young. <laughs> yeah, I see him again that night. They came wanted in the flop house. 50 cent towers for a bed. Me? I'm sitting up talking to a couple of sailors. The subject of the conversation is gold. Hey, Pop, you mean there's gold here in Mexico? <laughs> Not ten days from this very spot. Whole mountain of gold's waiting for the right guy to come along, discover a treasure, and then tickle her until she lets him have it. <laughs> Question is, are you the right guy? Tell me something. Why is gold worth some uh, 20 bucks an ounce? Mm, I don't know, Pop. Because it's scarce, I guess. A thousand men say go searching for gold. After six months, one of them's lucky. One out of a thousand. Now, his find represents not only his own labor, but that of 999 others to boot. That's, uh, that's 6,000 months or 500 years scrabbling over mountains, going hungry and thirsty. An ounce of gold, mister, is worth what it is because of the human labor that went in to find the getting of it. Yeah. Never thought of it just like that. Well, there's no other explanation, mister. You start out, you tell yourself you'll be satisfied with 25,000 handsome smackers worth of it. <laughs> so help my lord and cross my heart. Fine resolution. After much of sweating yourself dizzy and grown short on provisions and finding nothing, you finally come down to 15000 and ten. Finally, you say, Lord, let me just find $5,000 worth and never ask for anything more the rest of my life. Yeah, $5,000 is still a lot of dough. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, here in this joint seems like a lot, but I tell you, if it was to make a real strike, you couldn't be dragged away. Not even the threat of miserable death could keep you from trying to add 10000 more. Get ten, you want twenty-five. Twenty-five, you want to get fifty. Fifty, a hundred. <laughs> like roulette. One more turn, you know, always one more. I wouldn't be that way with me. Oh, hello, mister. You didn't find McCormick, huh? I'll find him. But about gold, I swear it wouldn't be that way with me. I'd take only what I set out to get, even if there was still a half a million dollars lying around, just waiting to be picked up. I've dug for gold all over the world. I know what gold does to a man. You talk as if you once struck it rich. How about it, Pop? Yeah, what are you doing in here? A down and outer. That's the gold, mister. That's what it makes of us. Never knew prospector yet that died rich. Sure, I'm an odd old bone now, but say, don't you guys think the spirit's gone? I'm all set to shoulder a pick and shovel any time anybody's willing to share expenses. <laughs> I bet you are. Rather go by myself. Going to the loan's the best way. You've got to have a stomach for loneliness. On the other hand, going to the partner, too, is dangerous. Murder's always lurking about. Partners accusing each other of all sorts of meanness. So why should finding gold make a man any different? If he's the right kind of a man to start with, gold ain't going to change him. You ever tried running her down, mister? Ever tried prospecting? No, no, I ain't. <laughs> you didn't have the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, I knew that answer. <laughs> you know it all, Pop. 
Well, I think I'll go to sleep and dream about piles of gold growing bigger and bigger and bigger. A week later, I see him again, Dobbs and Curtin, all lumps and bloodied up. Looking for me, they were, something to tell me. Uh, they take me to a cantina and put a bottle of beer under my nose. And we found McCormick, Pop. Yeah, from the looks of you, I found a peck of trouble, too. Well, we got our wages, every last penny. Yeah, we've been thinking. Why not try digging gold for a change? Well, it ain't any riskier than waiting around here for a break. And this is a country where the nuggets of gold are just crying for you to take them out of the ground and make them shine on coins. Now, the fingers and necks are swell dames. <laughs> well, that's what you said the other night, wasn't it? Yeah, what's so funny? <laughs> living out in the open is cheaper than living in town. <laughs> Our money would last longer. Yeah, sure it would, sure. Only you have to have equipment. Ever think of that? How much that all cost? Well, we, uh, we figured we'd ask you. We ain't denying anything when you come right down to it. We don't know much, much about prospecting. Of course, if, uh, if you wasn't so old... Uh, maybe, it, uh, maybe I'd go with you, huh? Is that what you're, what's on your mind? Uh, you want to take me along? Uh, would you go? <laughs> would I? <laughs> Say, what a question. Of course I'll go. Any time, any day, out for gold. Always at your service. Well, I got 200 American bucks ready cash. Last money I got in the world. How much dough you guys got to put in? 150 bucks. Curtain here has the same. Total 500 ain't hardly enough to buy the tools, weapons, and essential provisions. What do we need guns for? Well, for one thing, meat. For another thing, bandits. Bandit country's where we'd be gone. We ought to have uh, 600 bucks between us. Well, that much, huh? Can't dig up anymore, huh? Not a red cent. Senor! Senor Dobbs, I look all over for you. Give me my money, senor. Give me my money. Get away, Get away from me, will you? Senor, you don't comprehend. You'll comprehend a glass full of beer right in your kisser if you don't leave me alone. I tell you, I don't want any lottery tickets. Now beat it. Lottery tickets? <laughs> well, that's for gambling, man. <laughs> but always whoever wins the lucky number gives the seller a present of 10%. Hey, wait a minute. What are you talking about? Dobbs. He's trying to tell you he, he sold you the winning ticket. But... Here, look. The least of all the winning numbers. You buy ticket for five centavos, remember? Two, three weeks ago? Yeah, yeah, I remember. What about it? You win, senor. A 200 peso prize. Oh, give me that paper. Oh, just look at that fat, rich, printed number. You got the ticket? Sure, I got the ticket. Oh, 200 pesos. Welcome, sweet little smackaroos. Here, son, here's a present for you with my blessing. Go to the lottery office, senor. Get the money. Well, congratulations. Congratulations yourself. You stand a profit out of this the same as I do. How do you figure that? But did he just say we needed 600 bucks? Well, that's what we got now, ain't it? Yes, sir. Just like that. Stroke of fate. Fortunate circumstance. But how come you're putting up for me? Because this is an all or nothing proposition. We make a fine, we'll be lighting cigars with $100 bills. If we don't, the difference between what you put up and what I put up ain't enough to keep me from being right back where I was this afternoon. Polishing the park bench with the seat of my pants. Put her there, pardon. Thanks, Dobbs. Well, gentlemen, now here's what we do. We'll take a train to Perla. That's a little town at the foot of the Sierra Madre Mountains. And there, when we're there, we'll buy our burrs and get away from the railroad. No use looking for gold anywhere near a railroad. <laughs> you got to have, uh, well, we got to go where there's no trails at all. Just bend. Now, that sounds okay to me. Okay, partner? Sure, sure. Yeah. We got to go where no surveyor, anybody who knows anything about prospecting, has ever been there before. Well, ha! drink up, gentlemen. Drink up. We'll buy a map and some railroad tickets. Bought about half our gear there in Tampica and then took the train for Perla. About 50 miles from Perla out in the desert, there's a big boulder on the tracks. Bandits trying to raid the train. Hey, they're retreating. Look, they're retreating. Look, they're riding off. <laughs> Hey, save your bullets, Mr. Dobbs. You're too far off now. I got three of them. Credit me with three. How many did you get? A couple, I guess. Mm, bandits. Uh, guess they were expected. That's how come so many federal soldiers riding on this train. That bandit that rode right up to the train. The one with the gold hat. Yeah, I had my sights on him nice as you please. But the train gave a jolt and I missed him. I sure wish I could have got him. Well, you boys cooled off enough to look at this map? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, it ain't much of a map. Don't properly show whether it's mountain or desert. That shows the makers of the map themselves don't know for sure. That's good. <laughs> uh, what are you doing, Dobbs? Why, reloading. Can't tell if them bandits may come back. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, well, wake me up when the shooting starts. Now, 
con una media luna arriba. Esto es lo mismo. Una A con una media luna arriba, ma por Hey, Pop. What's he saying, the storekeeper? Ah, uh, he's proving he's got a right to sell us these burrs. They all got the same brand, see, letter A. Elsewise, some native Indian might meet up with us and claim our burrs. I will load your supplies on the burro, senor. Oh, thanks, son, thanks. Yeah. My father is much worried for you, senor. Worried? What's he worried for? Yeah, we paid him, didn't we? Well, he says we're going into very wild country, jungles, and then high mountains, and tigers so big and strong, they can climb a tree with a burr in their mouth. Tigers? Here? Yeah, more like leopards, I guess. Well, I'm glad to hear such tall tales, gentlemen. That means mighty few outsiders have ever set foot there. Yeah, well, let's get going, then. Come on, kid, shake it up. We're in a hurry. Get them burrs loaded. <laughs> Hey, Curtin, take it easy. That is mountain climbing. Ain't like a walk around the block. I, I'm dead. Let's sit a while. Yeah. If there is gold in these mountains, how long would it have been here? Millions and millions of years, wouldn't it? And then what's our hurry? A couple of days more or less ain't gonna matter. Look at the old man. Way ahead of us there. Yeah. <laughs> you and me scared, we'd have to pack him on our backs. Yeah. That was when I took him for an ordinary human being. He's part goat. Let him climb, will you? If I'd have known what prospecting meant, I'd have stayed in Tampico and waited for another job to turn up. I couldn't. Couldn't. Look. Look. What's the matter? These rocks. Look. These little veins running through the rocks. Look at them glitter yellow, too, like... Like gold. Gold? We've been sitting on a gold mine. Get the water bag. Wash some of that dirt off. Hey, Howard, Howard, come back. We found something. Yeah? Yeah, we found something. Here, here's the water. There's a vein all over the rock. We've struck it, Curtin. Look over there. It's in all the rocks, just like he said, a bonanza. Howard, look. Look at these rocks. Oh, they're full of gold, veins of gold. Yeah, that's what you wanted to show me? Yeah. I saw it when I passed by. Gentlemen, this stuff wouldn't pay you dinner for a carload. It ain't gold? Pyrite, fool's gold. Oh, not there ain't plenty of the real stuff hereabouts. Walked over it four or five times already. You mean we've been passing it up? Yeah. Why? Not enough of it. Not enough to pay us a good day's wages. Well, you figure to sit it out here all day? Come on, Kurt. Let's go. Next time you fellas strike it rich, holler for me before it starts splashing water around. Water's precious. Sometimes it'll be more precious than gold. Git, you burrow. Git, burrow. <laughs> that was a fine country, inspiring. Didn't see a soul, just the beasts of the jungle and birds, all bright gay colors. Felt good, ten years younger. Better man than either of them. Warm down to just plain gristle. Come out, well, might just lay on the ground, puffing and groaning, too dogged out to set up and eat their beans. I can't move. I just want to lie here. Yeah. Hey, aren't you guys going to eat some beans? Do you want some beans? Going through some mighty rough country tomorrow. You better have some beans. Oh, shut up, Pop. Go on, eat them up. Let us alone. How's your feet feel, Dobsey? <laughs> Bet you jump up like a jackrabbit was a pretty woman to stroll by. <laughs> Bet your feet wouldn't bother you nothing then. That wind. It's blowing up awful cold. Yeah. Getting cold, is it? Getting cold. Feels like a norther. Yeah. When they blow hard, they set that desert country up down there on its hind legs. We're lucky. Lucky to be up here, all right. <laughs> lucky. Reckon there's only a couple more days of this heavy stuff. Pretty soon we'll be leveling off. Pretty soon now. Howard. Howard, come here. A couple of more days, you said. That was three nights ago. We've had enough, Howard. Dobbs and me, we want to give up. Give up, huh? Yeah. Leave the whole outfit right here. Go back to civilization. <laughs> Well, tell my whole grandmother. <laughs> Go back to civilization. I got two very fine, elegant dead fellows who kick at the first drop of rain and hide the closet when thunder rumbles. My, my, my. What great prospect. Now lay off us, Howard. Yeah. Two shoe clerks is what you are. Two shoe clerks reading the magazine about prospecting for the land, going to the land of the midnight sun. South the border, west of the Rockies. Shut your trap. <laughs> Shut up, Ross. Smash your head flat. <laughs> Go ahead. Pick up that rock and throw it. Go ahead. 
If you did, you'd never leave this wilderness alive. Without me, you two would die here more miserable than rats. Leave him alone, Jobs. <laughs> Can't you see the old man's nuts? Nuts! Nuts, am I? Let me tell you something, my two fine bedfellows. You're so dumb, there's nothing to compare you with. You're dumber than the dumbest jackass. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. Did you ever see anything you like yourselves for being dumb specimens? <laughs> You're so dumb, you don't even see the riches you're treading on with your own feet. <laughs> Look at me. I'm dancing on a, I'm doing a dance on a mountain of gold. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is it? There's gold uh, here? <laughs> yeah, well, what'd you expect to see? Nuggets of molten gold? Sure, it's here. Rich, rich too, but not rich enough for me. Yeah, and here ain't the place to dig. It comes from someplace further up. Up there. See? That's where we've got to go, up there. Only I'm going alone, because my two courageous companions have agreed between themselves to desert and go back. Well, go on. Get. I'll take one more day of it. What do you say, Kurt? One more day won't kill us. Yeah, change your minds, huh? Thank you, my two fine friends. You move me to tears with your faith and trust in me. One more day, huh? Then you can follow my trail, because I'm going to be camping there tonight. This is it, Howard? This stuff right here? Yeah, this is it, all right. Gold. Sure don't look what I... like I thought it would. It's just sand. That's just sand. Yeah, it's just like plain sand. It don't glitter. I thought it would glitter. Oh, it'll glitter when it's refined. But that's another guy's job. Yeah, you got to know how to recognize it. That ain't all. Not to find it, not by a long shot. You got to know how to tickle her so she'll come out. Yeah, it's mighty rich, this sand. It'll pay good. How good? Oh, about 20 ounces a ton. At some $20 an ounce. How many tons can we handle depends in a week? On, well, depends on how hard we work. Well, we better pitch our camp down the mountain a bit. Why do that when the gold is here? In case anybody happens by, bandits or soldiers chasing bandits or Indians, or a pretty woman out for a stroll. In that case, we'll tell them we're hunters. And uh, well, maybe we'll get away with it, maybe. Hunters? Wouldn't it be easier just to file a claim? Easier, maybe, but not so profitable. Wouldn't be no time till an emissary from one of those big mining companies would be right up here with a paper in his hand showing us we had no right to be here. Well, how does it feel, you feller, just to be men of property? I'm sorry about the fuss we kicked up, Pop. Guess we was pretty dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we made it, and we're here. Men of property, what do you know? <laughs> yeah, everything's going to be all right from now on, huh? <laughs> everything's going to be fine. Sure it is. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> well, we'll find out, won't we, Dobsy? Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> Our stars will return in a moment with Act Two of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Say, John, do you know what color stockings are the greatest headache to photograph? Oh, skin tones? No, mm -mm, black. Well. The wardrobe people at Warner Brothers were telling me that the black opera length nylons Joan Crawford wears in Flamingo Road had to be washed ever so carefully. You see, the camera picks up the slightest imperfections. They looked wonderful, I remember. So I strongly suspect Lux Flakes. Naturally. Hollywood studios depend on these tiny diamonds. They're so fast and so rich, they freshen nylon safely in no time. Hollywood's way is the same care millions of girls give their nylons. Well, smart girls realize that it's foolish to risk strong soap or cake soap rubbing. These things make stockings go into runs in short order. Strain tests prove it. Prove that stockings washed with Lux Flakes last twice as long. And what a help that is when you give stockings hard wear. Well, Jones Nylon's got a good workout in Flamingo Road. That deliberately corny dance she does is magnificent. <laughs> Sidney Greenstreet will tell you that she packs quite a haymaker, too. <laughs> he took it on the chin in one of their violent scenes together. And uh, Zachary Scott, as the weakling Joan really loves, makes a wonderful contrast. Joan does a very convincing job, too, as a carnival girl who fights her way up the social ladder. But, you know, I was thinking afterwards that no matter how much money she had, she couldn't find a better, safer care for her costliest nylons than Lux Flakes. And they're within the reach 
of every girl. That's true. It's no wonder over 90% of the makers of stockings recommend Lux Flakes. Here's our producer, William Keeley. Act two of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, starring Humphrey Bogart as Dobbs and Walter Houston as Howard. Oh, for a month we, we didn't mind a grain of ore. There were things to do first, setting up camp, corral for the birds, and sluice way off the creek to wash out the gold. But finally, the time come when we weighed our first take of the treasure. How much, Howard? How much you figure we got? Oh, about $5,000 worth, I reckon. That's not bad. When, we, when do we start dividing it up? Why divide it now? When the time comes, we're all going back together. I'm for dividing as we go along. Make each guy responsible for his own goods. Well, I just soon have it that way. I haven't liked the responsibility of guarding your treasure any too well. Uh, who asked you to, Pop? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you never asked me. Only I thought I was the most uh, trustworthy of the three. <laughs> you? How come? <laughs> I said trustworthy. <laughs> as far as being honest, well, no one can say. I don't get it. All right, suppose you were charged with taking care of the goods. One day I'm deep in the brush and Curtin's on his way to the village to get provisions. That'd be your big chance to pack up and leave us in the cold. Only a guy that's a thief at heart would think me likely to pull a stunt like that. <laughs> well, right now, it wouldn't be worth your while, but, uh, well, when the pile has grown, uh, yes, sir. Such, uh, well, think of such things you will. Yeah? How about yourself? Oh, me? Well, I'm not quick on my feet any longer. <laughs> you fellas are a lot tougher than when we started out. Yeah, you'd have me strung up in no time. <laughs> that's why I think I'm the most trustworthy. Well, looking at it that way, I guess you're right. But let's do like Dobbs says, divide the proceeds every night. Well, by me, gentlemen. Then each one of us will have to hide his share of the treasure from the other two, huh? Well, why not? Having done so, he'll have to be forever on the watch to see that his hiding place is uh, not discovered. And what a dirty, filthy mind you got. <laughs> oh, no. No, not dirty, not dirty, baby. Only I know what kind of ideas even supposedly decent people get when gold's at stake. <laughs> All right, Curtin, hand me them weighing scales. Here she goes, boys, three ways. Venison stew. Sure tastes good, Pop. Where's Dobbs? He ate before. Alone? Yeah. Tell me something, Pop. What are you going to do with all your hard-earned money? Oh, I reckon I'll settle down some quiet place, get me a little business, hardware, grocery store, spend the better part of my time reading comic strips and adventure stories. <laughs> One thing's for sure. <laughs> I'm not going prospecting again. Yeah, what's all that about? Oh, it's just John and Dobbsy telling each other what we'll do when we get back. Me? I got it all figured. First off, I'm going to get a brand new set of duds, a dozen of everything. And I'm going to a swell cafe. Order everything on the bill of fare, and if it ain't just right, and even if it is, I'm going to ball out the manager and make him take it all back. What's next on the program? Well, what would be? <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, we ought to put up some kind of a limit on our take. Agree now that when we get so much, well, we'll just pull up stakes and beat it. What kind of a limit? Oh, say $25,000 worth for each man. 25000 Small potatoes, fifty anyway. Seventy-five would be more like it. I'm young. I need dough and plenty of it. No use making hogs of ourselves. Hog, am I? Maybe you don't know it. But I'd be within my rights if I demanded half again as much as you get. How come? Well, I put up the lion's share of the cash, didn't I? Well, so you did, Dobbsy. I always meant to pay you back. In any civilized place, the biggest investor gets the biggest return, don't he? <laughs> That's one thing in favor of the wilds. Oh, not that I intended to demand it, but I, I'd be within my rights if I did. So next time you go calling me a hog, just remember what I could have done if I'd wanted to. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, ain't it, Pop? Yeah, real funny. <laughs> Catch me sleeping, huh? I'm not that dumb. Day them guys try to put anything over on me, it'll be a costly one for both of them. Any more lip bottom, and I'll, I'll let them have it. You know what's good for you? You, you don't monkey around with Fred C. Dobbs. What'd you say, Dobbs? Huh? Oh, uh, oh, nothing. You better look out. Bad sign when a guy starts talking to us. Yeah? Him. Well, who else am I going to talk to? Certainly not to you or Curtin. And don't get the idea you two are putting anything over on me. I know what your game is. Well, you know more than I do. So why am I elected to go to the village tomorrow? Why me instead of you or Curtin? 
time I'd be gone, give you plenty of chance to discover where I hid my goods, wouldn't it? <laughs> you got any fear along those lines? Why don't you take your goods with you? Well, and run the risk of having them taken from me by bandits? <laughs> They'd kill you anyway, Dobsey. Just for the sport of it. Ah, so that's it. You're hoping bandits will get me. That'd save you two a lot of trouble, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, Dobbs. <laughs> Forget about it. Hell, I ain't going to the village, see? You can go back and tell that to Curtin. <laughs> okay, partner. I'll tell him. <laughs> so Curtin went down to the village for provisions. He was all stirred up coming back. There were soldiers in the village chasing bandits. That wasn't all. He met up with an American, a fellow named Cody. And he kept pumping me, followed me into the store, wanted to know what I was doing here. What did you tell him? I said I was a hunter, a professional hunter. Kept asking me, did I see anything up here that looked like gold? Shook him off, Curtin? Got rid of him, huh? I couldn't. He followed me. You sure he trailed you? Yeah, I'm sure. What makes you so positive? Because every time... Because if you turn around, you can see for yourself. There he is. Hello. All right, you. Walk over here to the fire. I, uh, guess I'm not wanted, huh? I just couldn't resist the chance to sit around and jaw with an American. Now, don't make any mistake, mister. We got no use for you. We're full up. No vacancies. Go back where you came from. Take our blessing with you. Thanks. Hungry, mister? Go on, help yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. We don't want a guy to starve to death. Tonight, you're our guest, see? But tomorrow morning, look out. No trespassing. Beware of the dogs. Get it? I, uh... I got a few hides while you were gone, Curtin. Five foxes and a tiger. How are the skins? <laughs> Pretty good. Hey, excuse me for butting in. But there's no wild game around here worth going after. Yeah, you're right, mister. You're right. That's why I've made up our minds to clear out. Yet it might be pretty good ground for something else. I told you in the village there's no gold around here. My boy, if it had been one single ounce of it, I'd have smelled it, believe me. Then you're not as smart as you appear to be. Gold, huh? <laughs> It gives me an idea. <laughs> Guess I'll sleep on it, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, me too. See you in the morning, Cody. Sorry there's no room in our tent. If you want to, you can roll up here by the fire. Oh, that's fine. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I can't figure him out. Is he wise to us or not? Now you guys go to sleep. I'll be watchdog for a couple of hours, and then you and Dobbs can take your turns. You got a gun handy? Yeah, right here. Okay. much sleep last night. Did you, friend? <laughs> That's fact. We didn't. Well, let's lay our cards on the table right now, huh? You found gold here. I know it. And because I know it, you'll have to do one of three things. Now look who's telling us what we gotta do. One of three things. Kill me, run me off, or take me in as a partner. Partner? Well, we... Now let's consider the first. If you start killing people, just how far are you prepared to go with it? Another guy may come along tomorrow. Not much we'd stop at, mister, to protect our interests. I only say that killing me isn't the answer. As for choice number two, you run me off, and I might very well inform on you. 25% of your gold is a reward I'd get. It's a pretty strong argument in favor of killing you. Yeah, I don't deny it. But take me in as a partner, and you don't lose anything. I'm not asking for a share of what you've made so far, only in the profits to come. <laughs> Think it over. I'll be looking after my borrow. Well, Howard? Yeah. Send him a ways out of the question. Uh, Fred C. Dobbs ain't a guy who likes being taken advantage of. We got no real choice at all. Bump him off. Mm. What, what do we gain by... What do we gain by killing him? I don't mind being taken some advantage of as long as there ain't no money out of my pocket. And whoever else happens along, they ought to be invited in too. Come one, come all, huh? Uh, you got a point there, Dobbsy. No question about that. But, uh... But to kill a man... What's the matter? Ain't you up to sure, it? Sure, sure I'm up to it. Let the majority decide. What do you say, Curtin? For or against? Well, for or against? For. Okay. We'll make it short and sweet for him. Stand right where you are, Cody. Guns, huh? Gonna shoot me, huh? Yeah. You convinced us. Uh, before you start shooting, you better take a look down there in the valley. There's some men coming. 
On horses. Oh, so that's your stinking game. I knew you was an informer. I knew it all the time. Uh, you're wrong, brother. This means all our funerals. Yeah. <clears throat> They're bandits, gentlemen. About a dozen of them. Someone at the village must have told them about the American hunter up here. Well, we'd better start thinking of a way to defend ourselves. We could try hiding the rocks, but well, then we'd lose the birds and the whole outfit. No, the best thing for us to make a fight of it. Is it you three against them or us four? Well, now I guess it's us four. Yeah. We'll settle your case later. If you're alive. <laughs> He's got something there, Dobsey. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if we're alive. <laughs> Ben has turned out to be Gold Hat and his boys. Same crowd that held the train on, our, on the way up to Perla. They spotted us, all right, and started pouring it on us. And all at once, they turned and took off. Didn't make sense. And when we saw why, far down the mountain, hot on their trail, was maybe 50 soldiers, federales. We just stood there watching them shoot it out, half a mile below us. Look at them federales. Sick them tight, chew them up and swallow them. Oh, boy, am I happy. I ought to tell you the truth, I was already eating dirt. Now, you better stay covered, Dobsey. If them soldiers start spreading out, we may have company after all. Yeah, yeah. Get down, Curtin. Come here, you guys. Looks like the bandits settled our problem. Cody's dead. What do you mean, he's dead? Take a look. A bullet. Right through his neck. Yeah, I wonder who he was. Maybe we better go through his pockets. Maybe he's got folks somewhere. Here's his wallet, Pop. James Cody, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and a picture. A girl, a little kid. Hmm. Guess she's his wife, huh? Oh, it's not bad. Well, I guess we better dig a hole for him. Funny how it's all worked out. We didn't have to shoot him after all. Gentlemen, if you ask me, I, I'd say it's about time we considered leaving this mountain. How much gold do you figure we got? Upwards of 35000 apiece, and I'll tell you what, we ought to be plenty thankful. Oh, well, let's call it quits, then. The sooner the better. Take another week to put the mountain back in shape. Do what to the mountain? We've wounded this mountain. It's our duty to close her wounds. It's the least we can do for all the wealth she's given us. If you guys don't want to help me, then I'll do it alone. You talk about a mountain like it was a real woman. <laughs> You've been a lot better to me than any woman I ever knew. Keep your shirt on, old-timer. Sure, I'll help you. Six days later, we loaded the gold on the burrs and little canvas bags and started down. Late that afternoon, pushing through the brush, we walked straight into a bunch of Indians. I don't know where they come. Peaceful, all right, friendly, but they uh, wanted help. What do you mean, help? What kind of help? They've been heading for Durango. Seems like a little boy in their village fell into the river. They fished him out, but he won't come to. He ain't dead, but they say he just won't come to. Well, that's tough. Well, they want me to go back to the village with them. Ain't far. Maybe I can do something. Why? Was I to refuse them? They'd make me go. I'll be back soon, before morning, probably. And have you not? I'm leaving my burrs with you. Look after my goods till I get back. It's okay, Pop. We'll wait for you here. It's no use arguing. Sorry, gentlemen, I... I gotta go, go back go back again to the village. Yeah, but you just said you fixed the kid. You said he was cured. Yeah, fixing the kid was simple. Artificial respiration, a few boy scout tricks. But they say I gotta visit them with... Well, I gotta go with them. Their gods will be angry if they don't show their gratitude oh, to me. Tell them to forget it. They don't owe us a thing. Uh, I tried. Just made them mad. Well, that's them over there waiting for me. I'll handle this. Savi hombre. No puta queda. No, no. Now, wait a minute. Don't, don't you touch your gun. Don't touch your gun or we'll be scalped in half an hour. Now, what's he saying now? Well, he says it makes no difference about you guys, but I've got to go back with him. Oh. Oh, it's like that, huh? Yeah. They looks, just want you. Looks like it. Well, go on, then. We'll meet in Durango. Well, uh, well what about my goods? Take them with you. Ah, if they found out, they might forget he was their honored guest and bump him off, huh, Pop? Well, what'll I do? Dump him out here on the ground? We'll take him with us if you want us to. Well. <laughs> Any better ideas, Pop? I reckon that's about the only solution. I'll bet you remember this the next time you try to do a good deed. Don't worry, Pop. Good luck. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be lonesome without you, Pop. 
Look out for those Indian dames. One of them squaws might marry you. <laughs> Maybe I'll do just that. Pick me out a good-looking squaw and marry her. <laughs> They're easy to dress and feed and entertain. <laughs> well, so long, partners. See you in Durango. And so I left them and went back to the Indians. No choice. I had to go. And behind me, in the keeping of Curtin and Dobbs, was my share of the treasure. $35,000. I knew they'd have a time of it. Just as hard going down them mountains as it was going up. I'm stopping here for the night. You hear me, Curtin? I'm stopping here. It's early yet. We can wait four or five miles before dark. Well, go on then. Take his bros with you. Ain't my responsibility. Since when? Give us nothing but trouble for two days. Straying off trails, smashing their packs against the rocks. He knew what he was doing when he turned them over to us. Mighty cute of him, wasn't it? So you're staying here for the night, huh? Yeah, you heard me. Well, if you can't go any further. Well, who says I can't? It don't make me laugh. I go four times as far as a mug like you, but I don't want to. I could if I want to. I want it, but I don't want to. See, Mug? What's the use of hollering, Dobbsy? Okay, we'll camp here. How far do you suppose the railroad is from here? Well, it's hard to say. We'll reach the high pass in two days more and get fresh water. After that, I don't know. <laughs> What's a joke, Dobby? <laughs> uh, I was just thinking what a bonehead play that old jackass made when he put all his goods in our keeping. Figured he'd let us do his sweating for him, did he? Well, we'll show him. We'll show him what? Well, can't you see it's all ours now? We don't go back to Durango at all. Nowhere near Durango. Steal his goods? Ah, where'd you ever grow up? Sure. Take his goods and go north. Leave the old jackass flat. Now, look, you don't really mean that. Fred C. Dobbs don't say nothing he don't mean. As long as I can do anything about it, you won't take a single grain of the old man's goods. Ah. So you want to take it all for yourself and cut me out? Well, you're out of your head. I'm on the level with the old man, same as I'd be with you. Oh, sure. For a long time, I've had my suspicions about you, and now I know I've been right. What suspicions? Now bump me off. Bury me out here in the brush like a dog. Why, oh, you are crazy, Dobbs. You're right. And you'd have not only the old man's good, but mine in the bargain. You'd have yourself a big laugh, wouldn't you? Thinking how dumb the old man and I were. Put your hands up, Curtin. Go on, put your hands up. Dobbs. Was I right or was I right? Go on, stand up. Get on your feet and take it like a man. Trying to put one over on Fred C. Dobbs. I... Pull a gun on me, huh? Pull a gun on me. Only now I got the gun, and you listen to me. Go on. Pull the trigger. Oh, Dobbsy, look, you're all wrong. I never intended to rob you. If you really mean that, then give me back my gun. Look, wouldn't it be better the way things are to split up? I mean now, tonight. Yeah. And yeah, that would suit you fine, wouldn't it? So you could fall on me but from behind, shoot me in the back. All right, then. I'll go first. And yeah, wait for me on the trail. Ambush me. If I meant to kill you, why wouldn't I do it here? Because you're yellow. You're yellow. You haven't got the nerve to pull the trigger when I'm looking you straight in the eye. You really believe that, don't you? Jokes. Full of jokes. Well, then we won't separate. We'll go on together. And every day you'll take the trail right ahead of me, and every night I'll tie you up. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Kurt. I'll make you a little bet. Three times 35 is 105. I'll bet you $105,000 you go to sleep before I do. How long can you go without sleeping, Curtin? Two days? Three? Four? Whatever it is, I can go longer, see? And the day you fall down on the trail, that's the day that Fred C. Dobbs wins his bet. $105,000. Like I said, Curtin, you couldn't take it, could you? Fell asleep, didn't you? Who wins the bet? Ha <laughs> ha! Who wins the bet? 
The old man will catch up with you. He will. Oh, he will, will he? Well, I got an answer for that one, too. I'll tell him you, tie, you tied me to a tree, that you stole all the goods, yours, mine, and his. So he'll be looking for you, Curtin, not for me. And a fat chance he's got of finding you. So long, partner. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. During this brief intermission before Act Three of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, I'd like to introduce a most promising young player, blue-eyed Claudia Barrett. Do you find it all work and no play on the Warner Brothers lot, Claudia? No, indeed, Mr. Keeley. In fact, watching a Technicolor picture like My Dream is Yours being made is entertainment in itself. I've been humming the songs ever since. And fine entertainment it is. You know, Jack Carson is a radio talent huckster, and Doris Day as a singer are delightful. It's especially good fun when Lee Bowman gives Jack some real competition for Doris's affection. You know, so many places of local interest are featured. Los Angeles people should feel right at home. And the clothes in my dream is yours. Mm, they're really dreamy. Doris wears some pink crepe pajamas with matching quilted robes. They're out of this world. <laughs> you mean they're not for a workaday world? No, that's what surprised me. The designer told me that the crepe they were made of is definitely washable. Oh, with Lux Flakes, that is. I'm glad you added Lux Flakes, Claudia, because wrong washing methods could easily spoil the delicate color. I know that, Mr. Kennedy. I play safe and stick to Lux Flakes for my nice things. Good girl. Well, you know, scientific tests prove that slips and nighties washed with Lux Flakes stay color fresh three times as long. These tiny diamonds are really amazing. They burst into suds the instant water touches them. Thick, active suds that leave undies sweet and fresh in no time. Yet they leave colors lovely. I guess they were gentle because they're so wonderful on my hands. You can believe your hands, Claudia. Mild Lux Flakes are safe for anything safe in water. They're another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company. Thank you for coming tonight, Claudia Barrett. We return you to William Keeley. The curtain rises on the third act of The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, starring Humphrey Bogart as Dobbs and Walter Houston as Howard. Yeah, I left Dobbs and Curtin on the trail with all my goods and gone to the village of the Indians. <clears throat> yeah, they couldn't do enough for me. Food, drink, for little girls to brush flies off me. Yes, sir, old man Howard is a regular mogul. Real potentate. Then some of their hunters came in from the brush. They were carrying a man. Curtain, it was. Curtain, with two bullet holes in him. Dobbs did it, Howard. Dobbs. Yeah, made off of their goods, huh? How could he be such a bad shot? He left me there. He thought I was dead. Now, take it easy, son. Take it easy. You're talking too much. Don't worry about me. I'll pull out of this if only to get that guy. Well, I reckon I can't blame Dobbs too much. What do you mean? Well, Dobbs ain't a real killer as killers go. I think he's honest the next fella, almost. Big mistake was leaving you two fellas alone in the wilderness. <laughs> Mighty big temptation, partner, believe me. Dobbs shot me down in cold blood. He shot me a second time just to make sure. The man goes crazy with that much wealth in his reach. Maybe if I'd have been young, been out there with either one of you, I might have been tempted too. Well, Curtin, <clears throat> nothing to do but set out after him. A couple of days, I'll be okay. Yeah, but not for chasing down a mountainside. The Indians, they could loan us horses. That's why I figure I'll catch Dobbs. He'd go as far and as fast as a man can, but alone, with them burrs and on foot. I'm going with you. Give me ten days, two weeks, and I'll come back for you. I'm going with you. Look at you, you're weak as a newborn kitten. Don't worry, I'll look after our interests. I'm still going. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I reckon you're going. <laughs> Some of the Indians came with me. Said they uh, had to protect me as he rode north. I tried to figure out what I'd do with Iron Dobbs' boots. I tried to make time. I 
I'd sacrifice anything for time, sleep, rations, even water. Otro burrito muerto, senor. El tercero con la marca de la letra A. Howard, what are they found? Another dead burr. Dobbs is really driving. That's the third burr he's killed off. I don't like this wind. Dust blowing like this cover up his trail. Yeah, it might blow like this for days. Fills a man's lungs with dust. Burns him out like pure poison. We're not going to stop, are we? Dobbs won't stop. Uh, we'll keep going. We, he'll be running out of water soon. We were going to fill up at the high pass. Yeah. Only he went north, and my friends say there's water's mighty scarce in the north. They say something else, too, Curtin. Yeah? Yeah. Gold Hat and a couple of his pals escaped the federales. They're on foot. They passed here just a day before Dobbs. There he is, amigo, see? At the mud hole. One man and six burros trying to squeeze water out of the mud hole. Aye, six burros. Shoes he wears, see? Shoes. I think the three of us have a little fun, huh? Jewelry too, maybe, huh? Come on, we say hello to our friend. Water. Water. Oh, I made it. I made it. Town can't be far off now. A road. That's a road over there. Just one more day and... Wait, amigo. What? What do you want? Senor, we are three poor men in rugs. Cigarettes? You have cigarettes, maybe? No, I... No, I haven't. I... I got a little tobacco, so that'll do. He's got a little tobacco. No paper to roll it in? Paper? Yeah. Yeah, here. Going into Perla, amigo? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh... I gotta sell my burrows. I gotta get some money. Matches. Or cigarette. Yeah, match. Yeah. Here. Your handshakes, amigo. You sick, maybe? Sick? No, I... Oh, I, I ran out of water. I'm all right now. I I could use a good burrow driver, maybe maybe two or three. <laughs> burrow <laughs> drivers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll uh, I'll pay when we get to town. I'm a I'm a hunter. See all those hides? Hey, did I know you from some place? Maybe I know you, huh? No, no, I don't think so. You are all alone. A poor, lonely man? No, 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 I... I'm not alone, I... I got a couple of friends coming along. They, uh... Yeah, they ought to be here any minute. Let me look at your face. Uh, Jure, Jure, I know I've seen you before. Up in the mountains. The guy in the rocks before the Federalist chase us. crazy, i never seen you till now. You don't remember me? Me with the yellow sombrero, the gold hat? But then you tell a lie. No, no, so I... So you have a lot of hides on the burros, huh? Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I'm a hunter. Mm, ought to bring lots of money, huh? All these hides. Yeah, get away from them. Get away from them hides. Well, we can sell these burros, too. Hey, watch these. The little cloth bags filled with something. Hey, give me a knife. I think I look in the little bag. You touch those bags and I'll kill you. Hey, it's some kind of joke. Nothing in this bag, only sand, dirt. All the little bags got only sand. Get out of here, clear out before I... A pistol, I... huh? Well, you can't even frighten a sick louse with that. You can only shoot one of us before the other two jump on you. And that one wouldn't mind too much because the Federalists are after him anyway. Stand back there, stand... <laughs> hey, with the rock! I hit him with the rock! His shoes! I'm gonna get his shoes! Finish him off. Come on, finish him. <laughs> How you feeling, Curtin? I'm all right. Town is over the hill there, Perla. We're almost there. But will Dobbs be there? Uh, yes, sir. That's the question, all right. Uh, shooting. Yeah. Kind of like a volley. Sounds seem to come from the town. Miranda, senor. He does los federales. He does los bandidos. Si, federales. Uh, execution, probably. Well, we'll know about it pretty soon now. Like 
we guessed it all right, Curtin. Execution. Three bandits. The storekeeper here says that one of them was Gold Hat. They finally got him. Mm, yes, sir. No, it's true, senor. Mm-hmm. Uh, he says uh, that's not all. Look, we better keep after Dobbs. Yo tengo malas noticias, senor. Su compañero. Uh, bueno, amigo. Su compañero fue matado a sangre fría por los tres bandidos. He's dead, Curtin. Dobbs is dead. Dead? Yeah, those bandits. But our goods. What does he say about our goods? Donde están uh, nuestras uh, cosas? Aquí, aquí, señor. Yo tengo todo aquí, incluyendo los burritos. Están detrás de la tienda. Uh, he says he's got everything. This way, Curtin, the back of the store. It's not here, Howard. The gold's gone. Everything else is here but the gold. Keep your shirt on. Señor. Aquí pasa, señor. Uh, ¿Sabre algo sobre unas costelitas uh, muy posadas? No, señor, no. De eso no son nada. Well? Says everything the bandits had is right here. Señor, you asked my father about some little canvas bags? Yeah, yeah. Where are they? Uh, uh, costelitas, ma de que hable, hijo. Uh, un momento, papá. I do not know where the bags are, señor, but I heard the bandits talking in the jail. They said the señor whom they kill had canvas bags with sand in them. Many, many bags on the burros. Well, where are they? Where did they kill the American? At the water hole by the ruined wall, outside the town. Can you take us there? Oh, yes, senor. Right away. Here's another one, Howard. Empty. The bags are all empty. They're cut open and empty. Keep looking. Keep looking. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're all... Yeah, they're empty, all right. <laughs> Another couple of hours in this wind and we wouldn't even find the bags. Swept away and buried under the dust of the earth. <laughs> but what happened? Bandits. Them miserable, stupid, ignorant bandits. Stole Dobbs' shoes, took the shirt off his back and threw away $105,000 worth of gold because they thought it was sand. But then it must be here on the ground somewhere. Here. Here. Here in this wind. Ha! Ha ha! It's a great joke played on us by the Lord or fate or nature, whatever you prefer. <laughs> but whoever or whatever played it certainly had a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> the gold is gone, Curtin. Gone back to where we found it. Gone. It's all gone. Dobbs is dead and the gold is gone. <laughs> <laughs> of suffering and labor, this joke is. Look at the Indians. They're laughing too, only they don't know what they're laughing at. <laughs> That's our own private joke, Curtin, old boy. <laughs> well, well, Howard, what next, I wonder? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm all fixed. I'll go back with the Indians, be a medicine man. Three meals a day, five I want them, roof over my head and a drink every now and then to warm me up. I'll be worshipped and fed and treated like a high priest for telling people things they want to hear. Good medicine men are born, not made. <laughs> Come and see me sometime, my boy. You'll take your hat off when you see how respected I am. Yeah, I'm all fixed up for the rest of my natural life. How about yourself? What are you aiming to do? I haven't got any idea. Ah, you're young yet. Got plenty of time to make three or four fortunes for yourself. You know, I'm really no worse off than I was back in Tampico. I'm out a couple of hundred bucks when you come right down to it. Not very much compared to what Dobbsy lost. Any special place you're bent on going? No. All places are the same to me. Tell you what, you keep my share of what the burrs and the hides will bring, and if you use the money to buy a ticket to Dallas, See Cody's widow. Better than writing. Tell her what happened. Okay, Pop. I'll go to Dallas. Hey, you, son. Come here. Yes, senor. Tell your father to give this man all the hides and burrs. They're all his now. I'm going off with the Indians. Yes, senor. I will tell him. Well, I guess I'll round up my heathen brethren and we'll be on our way. Bye, Curtin. Bye, Howard. Good luck. Same to you. Uh, 
Our stars will return for their curtain calls in a moment. Now, dishwashing can be a chore if you use the wrong kind of suds. But when you change to Lux Flakes for dishes, you'll feel like singing. Lux diamonds do so much for you, they make dishwashing fly. Suds fast and rich, clean every dish in the twinkling of an eye. Get Lux diamonds to dishpan hands farewell. Wash dishes often as you like, your pretty hands won't tell. Are your hands rough and red from using strong soaps in the dishpan? Then change to gentle Lux flakes. You'll be amazed how soon your hands will be soft and smooth again. These tiny diamonds of Lux speed up dishwashing, too. Burst into suds in a jiffy. And they go further. Tests prove that ounce for ounce, Lux flakes wash up to twice as many dishes as any of ten other leading soaps. You will ever bless the thriftiness of gentle, mild Lux Flakes. Suds last so long, you'll sing this song, wash dishes with Lux Flakes. Get Lux Diamonds to dishpan hands farewell. Wash dishes often as you like, your pretty hands won't tell. Here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. For drama that rates the applause of this audience, our thanks go to this evening's stars. And here they are. Humphrey Bogart, and Walter Houston. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. You know, there's not much glamour available for this curtain call. Uh, don't look at me, Bogie. That's your department. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the glamour in my family is home looking after the baby, Walter. <laughs> Well, we'll settle for a man that's just won an Academy Award. Walter, it must have been a double thrill to win your Oscar the same night your son John won his for direction and the screenplay of the same picture. Yes, I was very proud of that moment, Bill. You see, a long time ago, I told my son that if he ever became a director, to please find a good part for his old man. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to speak the same lines to uh, my son, Stephen, tonight. In another 30 years, maybe he'll do the same for me. <laughs> Well, you know, to help things along, we've got a supply of Lux Flakes over there in the wings. You can take it home to him. <laughs> Thanks very much, Bill. He's the, he's the boy that can use it. Hey, uh, Bill, <laughs> what are you producing next week? Well, it's a musical hit with a thrilling story. The 20th Century Fox picture, When My Baby Smiles at Me. And the stars, well, well who else could they be but Betty Grable and Dan Daly. That's all anybody needs to know, that next week we'll have the wonderful team of Betty Grable and Dan Daly. Hey, that sounds like standing room only. Well, good night, Bill. Good night. Good night. And that applause says it all. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Betty Grable and Dan Daly in When My Baby Smiles at Me. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Humphrey Bogart is currently starring in his own Santana production, Knock on Any Door. Heard in tonight's cast were Frank Lovejoy as Curtin, Gerald Moore as Cody, Don Diamond as Gold Hat, and Bill Johnstone, Jimmy Ogg, Jack Petruzzi, Charles Latour, Jack Crucian, Jay Novello, Eddie Marr, and Johnny McGovern. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear When My Baby Smiles at Me, starring Betty Grable and Dan Daly. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of When My Baby Smiles at Me, starring Betty Grable and Dan Daly. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.